Why, hello everyone, and welcome back to THE Anime Club. I'm Nick Knack, with me is the great Lord Morn. Hello. Realm Shifter. What the dog doing? Hmm? Uh, eating me alive, apparently. Yeah. Well, more like licking Seki to I, death right now. What? I, I, I don't know, man. I didn't think I tasted that good. Um... Seki bugs. You, ta you taste, li you taste, I guess, still like fresh Greek food since you just got back from your trip from Greece. Huh? Do I, do I taste like euros? Do I taste like kebabs? Probably very, very well seasoned at this point. <laughs> <laughs> ah, don't my <laughs> uh. Well, guys, this week we want, or <laughs> for this week, uh, food wars. Shokugeki no soma. Yes. I'm gonna yes. go wash my hands. Right, understandable. <laughs> uh, oh. Well, it was Seki's pick, but she just left the room, so... Well, I mean, we could still go on our thoughts real quick. And yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. let's go Let's go around the table here. Vorm, let's go. Uh, perfect to inspire you to cook, uh, but god dang it, you should not... Like, watch this uh, with the windows open. You might uh, get accidentally... Uh, well, what you're saying is it doesn't pass the open door test. Yeah. Horn, it's hot anyways. You shouldn't You shouldn't have your uh, windows and door open in summer if you want to keep the cool air inside. <laughs> well, Seth, you since you've so graciously returned, what, did you, what, what are your thoughts here? Respectfully, I love Food Wars. This is one of the greatest animes I've ever watched. And I've also read the manga, right? Which gives the added benefit of providing the recipes for the food that they cook in the manga. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it does. Amazing. Realm, how about you? This is the pinnacle of cooking show anime. It embodies the perfect uh, essence of shonen. What it means is to chase a goal and to chase everything. I don't know. I was trying to do a, like a food war bit right there where they're describing the taste of the cooking, but I, I should have scripted it more, honestly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, basically, I, I think that this one, what really excited me is, like, even though it is just, like, a cooking show, it really kind of helps capture still that same, like, shonen element, which is, like, a goal and ambition, which I think, honestly, is what makes this show so entertain entertaining, even though it's literally just cooking. Mm -hmm. So, I, I think, I really like the show. It is truly inspiring. Exactly. Nick Nack, has this inspired you to create any culinary masterpieces lately? Culinary masterpieces? I'd highly doubt calling uh, boiled spaghetti and meat sauce culinary masterpiece. Ah, but, but was there too much oil in the meat sauce? No. Was the spaghetti half undercooked and half overcooked? No. So I view that as a total improvement. <laughs> <laughs> But it was really good. Honestly, like, we... Not really a spoiler. I won't say much about it. We watched a lot of anime at once uh, for this. And this was definitely my favorite of the batch. Also, I'd, I'd like to maybe bring back into our collective memory. But I think about four or five years ago. And it might have been when we were hanging out at, like, Realm's house or something, mm -hmm. but I think at least the three of us, Nick, Knack, Realm, and I, I don't remember if you were there, Horn, we watched the first two episodes of Food Wars, and y'all were like, this is just porn. The f I think um, we only watched the first episode. Okay, it might have just been the first episode, but y'all yeah. were like, this is just I porn, think... and ever since, you've been teasing me about how this show is just <laughs> porn, and I've been <laughs> watching this show and staying up to date with it, because I like Food Wars. And I always made the argument, it's not porn, it's kind of like Game of Thrones. The first episode is, the first couple episodes are a lot worse than the show is on the whole. Yeah, no, okay, like so, but I think, this, I think this was, at, uh, no, I think this was actually at your house, from what I remember. No, it was in someone's apartment. It was your apartment. Yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh. Huh. Yeah, it might have been your apartment. Yeah. <coughs> not, not when we were roommates. But yeah, like, when, when we were at my, my dad's apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it, it was a long time ago. We were still in high school. Yeah. When this happened. We were all hanging out, I remember that. Jeez. Yeah. We were Jesus. just, like, sampling animals. Was there really? Because you know, Nick really? Nack also showed oh, us Oh, yeah, okay. Masamune Kun no Revenge? Something. Uh, I did I show you guys that? You showed us the that. first I episode. I think you did. Then? On the same day. Because huh. what we were doing was... We
Now we're recording. Okay, so, because what we were doing was we were going through, like, some streaming service or something, and we were just watching, like, at the first episode or two of anime just to see if we liked it, and we were showing each other different stuff. Because we used to do that a fair amount when we were, like, in high school or, like, right at the beginning of college. Sometimes we'd just go to a streaming service and then randomly click into different animes and, like, try them, and then, because that's how we watched, like, a couple of, like, really weird animes that I now have, like, strange memories of. Yeah. yeah, I do remember mm-hmm. doing that. Yeah. yeah, I do. I do vaguely remember doing that. I just don't remember very well the specific time that we did it in my apartment. Though also that's just because we very infrequently were at my dad's apartment. Maybe, maybe mm-hmm. it just formed a core memory for me. Probably. I I can't. Somebody really watched again. Inside Out recently. Did Actually, <laughs> I did not. But every single person I know did. Who <laughs> I, I discussed did. it with. I can Fun be fact. with you on this one, Seki. I have not watched either Inside Out yet. <laughs> did you watch the first one? Okay, I haven't seen even the first one. But though. but like, so the second one came out this summer. Uh huh. And for some reason, I know seven different people who went and watched the second one. Yeah, that movie did surprisingly well. Sorry, I'm fixing something. Uh, yeah. That's that's what I heard from the people I know who watched it in Greece, <laughs> let alone here. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I just watched it for the first time like three or four weeks ago. Mm. I yeah. watched both movies like back to back. Yeah. yeah. But okay. that's not this is not the inside out, inside out two <laughs> discussion here. No, this yeah. is Shokugeki no Saba. And to clarify, I did have them watch episodes one through nineteen. Um, and some of you may be like, why one through nineteen? Why not just through the end of that arc? Or why go up to nineteen? Um, and it's because we, we do technically have an episode limit to how many episodes we can force each other to watch in one session, right? Mm-hmm. There's some leniency with it if we ask, but like there was no way I was getting the whole 24, 25 episode season in. And that doesn't finish the arc anyways, but at the same time, I really think that the arc that I've, like, the, where I've left you off with like the announcement of who's competing in the autumn, uh, the autumn elections, right? I thought that was a really good place to end the first submission because it kind of leaves you on a cliffhanger and then I think it enables me to get through the whole autumn election in the next the next time I put this in. Because I will be putting this back in because I really enjoy it, but I only really want to get you guys through the autumn election. Hmm. But beyond that, I don't really care if we watch any more of it. I just think it would be fun to get through the autumn election. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and so in, to facilitate that, of course, you guys did watch through two openings. Mm-hmm. Um, the original opening and then the second opening, you also watched two EDs. Um, personally, I think the two OPs are quite good. I think that, so if you've listened to the two OPs, it, like back to back, it's more obvious. But they have, the two openings have very different moods. And that's because the second one is actually for the more kind of shonen battle-esque part of this anime, which is the autumn elections. So it's a lot more like energetic whereas the first one is very kind of like da, 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 da. It's, it's like chill and it's because if you if you like watch the animation it's it is a very chill section because it's just learning to get getting to know your characters learning about food trying different things it's not aggressive per se not, no, I think the not first yet, one's more yeah, memorable yeah. as a result because it's not just the mm-hmm. traditional shonen op mm-hmm. yeah yeah, I, I would say, like, at least as far as comments in the OP, um, I mean, there is straight up just a, a scene in the second OP where two characters are, like, actually having, like, a sort of shonen battle where they, yeah. they do, like, clash, like, knives or something like that together at some point, too, yeah. which is kind of funny considering that never happens anywhere at any point, <laughs> yeah. but it, it's still funny just to see, um, but yeah, no, I did enjoy both of these OPs, um, I'm not really sure, honestly, like, which I prefer, because neither of these really, like, stood out to me, honestly. I prefer the first one, to be honest. I just, it's, and I think part of that is the visuals, because the first one is very, it's almost like, like, Ieshike mm. sort of mm. vibes, because it's, it's very colorful, sort of, like, farming stuff, meeting, like, seeing all the characters doing what they enjoy doing. It's not, like, conflictive pretty much at all. And I think it's just a, it's actually just a fun opening to watch, personally, in my opinion, and listen to. Also, it doesn't, it, it does sort of aid it in that, I, you know, we play those anime opening song challenges, that and the first opening is always the one that they use. Yeah. And, I'm like, the, the amount of times I've heard, like, the first 10, 15 seconds of that song right. are insane. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I will say, the endings are also similarly reflective. So if you look at both the endings, the first one's a lot more chill, a lot calmer. The second one's a little bit more, like, pepped up. So at least they're mm-hmm. trying to match the openings and endings with kind of the vibe of the show at the time, which is not the case with all animes. It doesn't have to be. Um, other than that, the endings, I think, are pretty nondescript. They're nice, but I don't care that much about them. That's fair. Yeah, I I did like the uh, OPs when like this was airing, but the novelty has worn off. It's been because you you were watching this like with me back in like the yeah. end of high school and like the beginning of college. I remember discussing like whether we were on first plate or second plate because they call the different seasons the plates. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we're up to what like fifth plate or sixth plate? It's, it's, it's done over now. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was fifth plate if I fifth remember plate, correctly. Yeah, because it, it it ended like this is not one of those shows that's gonna go on for three hundred episodes. It no. did end. Yeah. Um, and also all of the sub. Subsequent seasons are only 12 episodes. I think so, yeah. yeah. Only the first season is 24 episodes. It's two cores. Mm-hmm. But all the rest of the, the seasons, the plates, are the 12 episode format. Yeah. Yeah. At least as far as I'm aware. I looked it up earlier and I can't remember, but I thought they were shorter. Yeah. Yeah. Because this this uh, this show has never had like another two core season that I know of. Mm. Yeah. They just went out especially long for the first set. Yeah. 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 I, th- I think, it, you know, it was popular enough that it was given two cores. Because technically this does split well at 12. Like, I could have left y'all off at 12 and it yeah. wouldn't have really been a problem. Yeah. I just thought that you guys might like to see some of the stuff after 12. And I really liked the autumn election. So it felt like a nice place to drop you to kind of keep your interest peaked. Because um, I'm sure we'll get there. But I'm certain that you have some interest in the autumn elections. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, as for animation, um, I think the animation on this show is great. I'm gonna be honest. I think they're, I think they're very creative, with how much effort they put into which creative scenes. is a word. Yeah. <laughs> Best animated porn on the internet. I mean, it's not quite porn. Not instead of calling the instead of calling this food wars, they should have called it food corn. It's <laughs> it's not quite porn. <laughs> Um, it is done by JC Staff. I'm not going to go through and list some of the stuff JC Staff Staff. has done. Um, I will say that the director has done not a whole lot of other things I've heard of. Like, the director didn't do a whole lot of other stuff. Interesting. Um, which is interesting. Yeah. To me, at least. Um, and then the music is by the same person who did Future Diary and Faith Khaled Liner, Prisma Ilya, and Free. I'll say Khaled Liner, Prisma Ilya has a decent soundtrack, so it's not mm. a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so so it just, you know, it's it's 80, the total series is 86 episodes long and ended in 2020, right? So it's, it's not a very long series. In fact, we've literally covered almost a quarter of it already. Right. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, so the manga originally came out in 2012. Yeah. 2012. And mm. then... Technically, the anime started in 2015. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we were watching this during like high school. Yeah. Um. So, where 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 are we going from here? I mean, to be honest, for me at least with this show, I really did enjoy a lot of the stuff that it had going for it because one of the I think the problems with a lot of other like shonen type shows is kind of the, this weird inability to like balance its either its comedy or its romance elements depending on what type of shonen it is but i feel like this kind of sticks pretty true for the most part and also it splices up its comedy pretty well it doesn't feel like overly um cringy is the best way to describe it it doesn't feel like it stays overstays its welcome i feel like maybe because it's aware of how how over the top and cringy some of the food moments are, like the the food porn moments are. Yeah. It it does a good job of balancing everything else around that. Yeah. So that you're not just staring at this going, Ugh, I yeah. don't, don't want to watch yeah. this, or that's just weird. There's a good balance yeah. of like different moods across the show's runtime. Right. But also the thing is, too, is that, like you said, um, the first like few episodes kind of really have that, that food porn aspect really yeah. overly emphasized too much so as the series or as the season goes on it get those emp- those moments get emphasized less and less 
and usually they only have like one like really long scene of it happening given and even then sometimes actually in those like food bliss moments the characters aren't even necessarily stripped naked sometimes they're just put in like maybe a, a princess outfit or something like that depending on who's eating like the food I, or whatever and i think one of the things i love that happens is when the food bliss moment is not positive yeah. Something not really sexual, but like just funny yes. happens. Yes. Like they get attacked by like a million little somas or like, you know, they see the king of hell yes. up here <laughs> or something like that. I, th I think that's, that's, it's nice because they could have just shown only the good moments and made it very full of like kind of food porn. Mm -hmm. um, and what, what a literal way to interpret food porn, mm -hmm. by the way. I know, right? <laughs> it is a very creative interpretation of food porn i think oh definitely um yeah. also there's there's a pretty good kind of selection of like this isn't just this 19 episodes isn't just one one arc happening you get to see like a couple different arcs so we you know we've got him with his fa his father's restaurant starting school kind of saving his dorm um the the karage mm -hmm. episodes um, so you've, you've got a bunch of like smaller stories, but it still feels cohesive and goal focused, I think, which sometimes is not the case. And there are certainly other shows like Shonen, especially where that I've shown you that there has not been what feels like a cohesive story focus mm -hmm. on the smaller arcs. Yeah, it more feels like the author was writing train of thought, whatever whatever they wanted to write at the time. It was ki kind of like I think the best example of this train of thought kind of style writing in Shonen is like Reborn, for example, where a lot of the the kind of, at least what we've been watching mm -hmm. up to this point in Reborn, is very Train of Thought-esque. Well, I know a lot of that was like filler, but it still was very Train of Thought-esque. If I, of all people, can step in to defend Reborn here for a second, I think Reborn wasn't necessarily going for something more structured at, the, at that point, though. I think Reborn was going for very episodic, like, almost Pokemon like daily life mm. that's why yeah. it was called daily life there are some shonen though like uh, Naruto yeah they, I wasn't yeah. going to say because we're going to be talking about that Naruto. sometime in the near future where, where the arcs aren't really foreshadowed at all mm -hmm. and you just kind of get there and like hey this is happening now we're going to spend the next 20 episodes on this <laughs> yep. yeah, yeah. I, I think the other thing is from what I've noticed and, and I don't know how strongly it comes through in the first 19 episodes but there's a fair amount of, um, like, learning that the main characters go through, and then they maintain that knowledge going forward. So, like, mm -hmm. they'll mention things that they learned or use techniques that they've become aware of mm -hmm. again and again and again. And I think that works really well in a cooking show because a lot of what they're learning is kind of staple lessons, like things that will genuinely help their cooking. And so it mm -hmm. doesn't make sense for them to learn a technique and then not ever use it again. So I appreciate that they do bring back the use of a lot of the things that they're learning. Also, a fun thing to keep in mind here is that all of the cooking techniques that they're showing you and teaching you about are genuine things that you can do, it's, you can do yourself at home. And the manga includes instructions for it. Right? So, like, the, the things that they are making and cooking and the tips that they are giving you, like the tips and tricks, those genuinely work. You could try these recipes on your own or use these tips and tricks in your own cooking. Mm -hmm. Like, I've certainly used a couple of the things I've seen in Food Wars in my own cooking. Like, I've uh, already made a couple. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, one of the things that kind of, it, it's a little strange for me just because of like what I do at least know about cooking for myself mm -hmm. um it's it's mostly that kick cooking it's not so much a talent it's more so a skill because it's something that you have to learn you have to practice it's not just something that you're innately ever good at you just have to know through trial and error most of the time well and the mm -hmm. even more interesting thing is you can gain innate kind of innate cooking skills right like you can train yourself to the point where you know what needs to be done if something goes wrong, right? But you're not born with that knowledge. No. Right? Cooking is not a talent that you're necessarily born with, but you, like, if you've cooked for, like, a long time, and let's say, you know, in my case, let's say I'm making chili or something, and I've, I've made my chili recipe probably a hundred times at this point, and if I'm looking at it and it's been cooking for a certain amount of time and I'm like, well, that still feels too watery, I know what to do to fix it, right? But I know what to do to fix it 
because the you know the the thing that you use to thicken up soup is something that I learned from another recipe a long time ago, right? And but it's universally useful. So techniques and tips and tricks are pretty much transferable. And once you know enough of them, you can apply them, right? Like the principles of cooking can be applied to more than the ingredient you learn them for, typically. Mm -hmm. I think the best example we get this honestly in the anime is in that one. Um that one um, battle arc where they're all in that uh, that buffet battle mm -hmm. where um, Soma yeah. he hasn't sold he or he hasn't served like more than like a handful of plates at this point yeah and because of how his because of the dish he chose and so he has to make a quick decision on the fly to make essentially a new recipe that you know keeps the idea of what he's going for mm -hmm. but makes it so that way it'll be more appetizing for a longer period of time. I think he kept mm -hmm. the same recipe. No, he keeps no, the exact same, same recipe. He changes the way that he advertises it to people. Yeah. Because uh, it's a souffle yeah. omelet and souffle if you leave it for mm -hmm. more than a couple of minutes it starts to deflate. Right. right? Yeah. So, you know, he he puts out all of his omelets obviously because you serve banquet style at a buffet like that and then they're they're all fucked up. So he starts um, doing it as like show cooking instead mm. of buffet cooking, right? Which is different techniques of cooking mm. in and of themselves, like cooking for different purposes. If you're cooking for show, you're doing things that are more fancy or visibly fancy, like souffle, yeah. you know, or flambe or something like that. Or as flipping. Opposed, yeah, yeah, as opposed to if you're buffet cooking, you want something that's like not shelf stable per se, but like plate stable, like it can sit there for a while without like a massively noticeable decline in quality. Mm. Whereas you can pick it up when it's fresh or like 30 minutes later and you'll still enjoy whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but I mean, once again, that's, that's another skill, you know, is knowing what food is going to weather mm -hmm. sitting out for that long. Like, there's yeah. a reason why I never make souffle. Right. And it's because mm -hmm. I don't have the patience. Um, and, and, I just, and, it's, and it's and it's all in that timing of knowing when to pull it out and just making sure you're keeping a keen eye over it yeah. Yeah. until it's ready and you can't miss it otherwise it, something might go wrong with it. Yeah. Exactly. If you take it out uh, too soon or if you leave it too long out, like it can overcook itself, mm -hmm. just use the residual heat. There, there's a lot of things you yeah. have to consider with souffle. So, I mean, it's, it's one of the set. I, and I think, personally, you know, based on the conversation we've had over the last ten minutes, this show is able to draw out conversation about things outside of anime from people, right? Yeah. Like, the, the sort of stuff that this show is going over are, is not necessarily something that's exclusively found in anime. And so the discussions and the knowledge and, like, the things you see and learn can be applied, like, all over the place. Which really makes it a very versatile show to yeah. talk about. Because I can bring this shit up talking to someone who's never seen anime just because I want to talk about, like, a cooking technique that I saw in it, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially because a lot of the stuff they make, especially Soma, he doesn't make things that are always super complex, but it shows how to elevate simple dishes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's kind of the way he, because that's kind of the way he grew up. Mm -hmm. He grew up as a... Um, as a sort of a mom and pop restaurant mm -hmm. diner cook essentially yeah. Yeah. and so he's he's taking what he's doing is he's taking these simple concepts and kind of trying to elevate them to their peak potential <laughs> is what which feels yeah. truly shonen yes yeah. exactly because <laughs> yeah. you know his, his ultimately soma's ambition he, he doesn't want to become like a, a world master chef or anything like that like he has a lot of ambition like he wants to be on the seat he wants to be number one on the seat of 10 mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. he doesn't want to become like a top class chef he doesn't want to travel the world he just wants to take over his dad's diner really and his dad was on the council and then his dad was on so he's the council almost of 10. like it's almost like you know, he, he has to exceed what his father does to take over his father's restaurant, even though his end goal is not some sort of, like, fancy-ass, like, chef's position, like, traveling all over the world. It's still, it's still the goal that he's set for himself forces him to push himself to excel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you can see in, like, uh, <clears throat> sorry, and you can uh, see in, like, later episodes if we ever get to there. Like uh, some vegetarian techniques, some uh, couple techniques that you can also use to replace a couple things if you want to. Also, Soma yeah. loses. Yeah, in this he does. Show. Yeah, he does. Like, and he, he, it's also, you know, he comes and, and meets with people who do have this more, you know, like when he meets with like um, Erica and yeah. stuff, mm -hmm. and th they're very different people to him, oh, yeah. right? 
and very different cooking, very different, like, etc. They look down on him. He doesn't really understand what they're doing half the time because he's like, why would you do all this fancy stuff when you don't need to? to okay, in absolute fairness, though, he did mm -hmm. show up on the first day, stand in front of everyone and kind of go, fuck all of y'all. Yeah, he did. <laughs> so him not yeah. being popular amongst the base of students mm. is not that unsurprising. No, 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 no. I'm not surprised he's not popular amongst the base of students. No, not at all. He has an abrasive personality. He, he, he's abrasive. I mean, he, he, I mean he, he's, it's not that he's so abrasive because if you talk to him, he's like a very well-meaning individual. He's kind of a bit Golden Retriever-esque. It's just that he's very blunt and he's not very, I'd say... Um, uh, emotionally kind of smart mm. in a sense. I'm not like other girls. I have no filter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I said, abrasive. Yes. <laughs> he, he can rub people the wrong way. Yes, is what it is. He, he's well he's well meaning, but he's abrasive and blunt at times. Like coarse grit sandpaper. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> exactly. That's a good description of him. Yeah. Mm. Um, and of course we have the whole rest of the kind of the cast of characters because we've got Megami, yeah. right, and mm. the, the people at his dorm, including uh, Naked Vegetable Man. Oh, um, yeah, <laughs> his, his running gag where he's just like basically cooking in a naked apron throughout the entire show. Yep. Fucking my favorite running gag. Also, Pickled Alcoholic Man. Yes. Uh -huh. Love love him. Megamine, yeah. right? Megamine. Yeah. Megamine, yeah. Yeah, um, and then you've got Erica and... Um, her little... Ir um, Irina? I, Irina's... Yeah. yeah ir wait, no, Irina Ar is... Irina? Irina, I think, is her cousin. Irina. God dang it. Ooh, no, Alice it? is the Alice, cousin. Alice, that's it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Alice is the cousin, and then... Irina's Irina. the... Yeah. Right when up, I said yeah. Erica, I meant Irina. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. My brain mixed two names together. Um, and then, of course, you know, one of my personal favorites, Nikumi... <laughs> Nikumi. <laughs> you just want all that meat. <laughs> well, no, because here's the thing. Nikumi, Nikumi cooks like I used to cook, right? <laughs> like when I first started cooking, I really thought that, that, that what, I, what I needed to do and all I really needed was to be able to cook meat, right? And mm. nothing but meat. And cook it with like butter and heavy, like all like very mm. rich like fatty meat dishes. That's my favorite um, kind of cooking, honestly, though. And I have... I have grown from that. That is now no longer the vast majority of what I eat. Is that because of me complaining, or is it because you got better? No, I think it, part of, part of it is the the the, the developed beef intolerance uh. in, in quarantine. Because here's the thing: you can develop intolerances to food, right? Like your body can can stop processing them properly. And I, in 2020, I was cooking a lot more, but I was cooking a lot of meat because we were home. But I was still cooking a lot of meat and not a lot of veggies, and it was mostly beef, and I actually developed a beef intolerance. Mm. Um, and so I had to stop cooking beef so much, and I don't really like cooking chicken or pork, and I'm not a huge fan of, like, lamb or, like, Any other know? kind of red meat, really. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I had to learn to cook more varied foods and, and experiment learn, more. I had to learn with more yeah. vegetables, a ton of, ton yeah. of fruits, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, like, to be fair, I still cook a... I still cook very hearty food. I don't often cook things that are like delicate and light. No, yeah, your stuff is def. <laughs> it's definitely on the your stuff like your chili, your stew. It's yeah. definitely on the heartier side. It's, of things. it's called it's called feeding a family in in a winter. Exactly. In a cold winter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> your your meals are, for lack of a better term, very Russian in a way. I mean, yeah. Meant to but, feed an entire family. But yeah. I no longer remove the vegetables from them unless it's onion, in which case that's a texture problem, and I still remove. Well, like onion flavoring is not an issue. Yeah, onion powder's fine. Onion itself, get fucked. <laughs> what's what's that ad? Uh, hefty, hefty, hefty. Yes, yes exactly. Yes. That's yes. exactly how I cook, and I have received no complaints. Nope. Honestly, well, though, I would. I've gotten though, some complaints. Honestly, though, I would. Honestly, though, I would like the uh, the the what is it? The heavy beef and buttery and fatty meat cooks again, because that is like my jam. I, I I will devour an entire steak. I mean, it, it's good, just not good all the time, you yeah. know? Not good yeah. for every meal. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, <laughs> I, I, mean, there were, I mean, there was a point in time, I mean, this is, an, this is entirely tangential, and I'm not going <laughs> to draw on it for too long, but I, I was like carnivore for like three months, and it worked out very well for me. 
I, we're gonna just leave that subject alone because it's another can of worms. <laughs> Why do we get meat? I prefer meat. It's actually chicken. I like beef, but I prefer chicken. Yeah, it's cooked well. Beef. Question. Pork, question. Chicken. Question. Though, what type of chicken? Breast or thighs? I can do either or. I can do pretty much all parts of the chicken. I think the only one I haven't eaten extensively is like feet and heart. Res- oh, respectfully, about- chicken heart is the best kind of chicken. Well, no. okay, hey, I just don't on. eat it extensively. I don't. I'm not saying I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. Hang on. They yeah. Don't really sell chicken heart. Yeah, they, they do. do. Well, it's it's like it's like less common. It's harder to find. I was gonna say I make chicken heart all the time. No, I was gonna say it's <laughs> hard. It's just harder to find. Okay. It's not something that you're okay. that yeah. you're gonna find easily, at least in American grocery which, stores. Which, uh, speaking of, I need to add chicken heart to my shopping list. <laughs> <laughs> um. And chicken being a white meat has a lot less health, like heart problem risks than yeah. red meat. So I try to eat it more than I eat steak. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say, but, you know, I mean, the the fear food pyramid is a whole other issue, but... Well, yeah, you should yeah. have a balanced diet. You shouldn't yeah. eat no veggies or fruit. I mean, yeah. I, 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 what was it? <laughs> I mean, I had coffee, but that's just more like my, no, it's more so just to hold over my coffee. Coffee, the most important part of the food. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> At the very bottom, it's like your base, right? Exactly. <laughs> that's just my, that's just to fuel my caffeine addiction. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I, I will say, I have not eaten the best since I got back from Greece because I've been trying to eat things that I didn't get to eat in Greece and then I've also gone out for a few meals so like since I've got back from Greece I've had an entire Papa Murphy's pizza oh boy right? oh my three burrito dinner oh god with rice and beans uh, uh, two things of Maruchan chicken flavor ramen uh, uh, bacon eggs and toast covered in butter uh, the Cattleman's two pound sheriff steak, along with stuffed loaded potato skins, Brussels sprouts, and mozzarella sticks, and sauteed mushrooms. Um, and all you can eat lobster buffet. Oh my god. You were being healthy for like two months and then you came back to just wreck all I that. Had Brussels sprouts. Well, but no, the point is the is the lack of caloric deficit here. It's not that you added Brussels sprouts to your side dish. If, if it makes you feel better, I still have half of the steak at home. I did not manage to finish it. It actually might be, be a little shocked, bit more than half. I'd be shocked if you managed to finish it. I honestly. could up until about five years ago. Yeah. Well, I know also you, I mean, I mean, you did say you ate the whole Pop Murphy's pizza when you came back. Okay, yeah. across two but, days. Uh, okay, okay, across two days. Okay, so yes, but you used to... Be able to finish a whole Papa Murphy's pizza in one sitting. I remember yeah. you, did, you did say that like a few years ago before no. your stomach just couldn't handle it anymore. Yeah, that just, I can't do that. I used to be able to when I was in like high school and college, but like I, I can't do that. I'm in my mid 20s, like firmly in my mid 20s. And I know my stomach will not let me do that anymore. No. Now, if you, if you cook it in the morning at, like, 10 a.m., <laughs> I can finish it by, like, 10 p.m. Yeah. So but then it's my entire day's meals. Yes. Is the one pizza. You know? Yeah. Soma has never heard of any of these <laughs> foods. <laughs> no, I mean, he's heard of them, but he doesn't yeah. eat like this. No. Yeah. Yeah. Really, when he does make them, they are significantly better than what we're eating. No, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Welcome to Anime Club lore discussion. I'm just yeah. saying, I've eaten like shit for a week, and boy, am I feeling it. <laughs> like, my stomach is unhappy with me, and I feel physically unable to eat any more heavy buttered meat. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, so that way we can kind of get back on topic since we went on a tangent that was not related to the show, why don't we go back into topic with Waifu Wars? Because we were still in characters. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Waifu Wars. Waifu Wars. Waifu Wars. Knickknack. I pass. Pass. Why? Because I haven't watched this anime in like two months. Do you think I remember names for shit? (laughs) Okay, well, I, well, I mean, I I already can, okay, I'll go with mine then. Uh, Megumi. She she is adorable and must protect. Um. So, Morn. Uh, Give me the karage, goddammit. Dude, the karage is your life. Yes. Oh, that's, you know what? That's you know what? fucking fair. You know what? Val, uh, the... Do you need a character list with pictures, Nick? I have one up right now. Okay. <laughs> I I don't think we saw a whole lot of this character. Um. But the, but so there are two characters that have his waifus in this show. I think both of them we didn't see a lot of. Right, one of them less than the other, but one is 
Isami Aldini? Oh, um, um, the no, Italian. We, yeah, we, we, we saw. No, that's what I mean. We yeah. saw Isami, yeah. and that that's the the heavier of the two yeah. brothers. Yes. Um, the other one is Ryo Kurokiba. Oh, okay. Ryo K- uh, Kurokiba, we only saw for like an episode or two properly. Yeah. Um, was was he um Alice's like blackie? Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Sasuke looking motherfucker. <laughs> really? I'm sorry. His hairstyle looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. He looks like him. What you're, can I you're say? Gonna, you're gonna ruin my wife in front of me, Ralph. I mean, technically, your husbando, but yes, I will. I enjoy. No, I'd wife that man up. He can be my housewife. <laughs> <laughs> put him in a put him in a bride outfit. There you go. Way of the house husband. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Way of the house husband. These men. Mm. Shit. <laughs> You can, turn, you can turn him into your boy wife. Look, I'll, I'll be the breadwinner if he cooks. Fair <laughs> no, You know what? Fair enough. Fat, fair and valid. I will go out and find a high paying job as so long as I get to come home to his cooking. Oh, boy. <laughs> no overtime, now, no nothing. Now, on clock. <laughs> Big Dak, you ready? This, I don't think this character is my wife who in the middle of watching, but I'm going to go with it because she stands out the best, Megami. Mm-hmm. All right, okay. we got Me- we yeah. got another Megan we stand. Woo-hoo. I mean, Megan Megan is really nice. I yeah. like her a lot. She's co- um, she she has country girl vibes because that's kind of her origin yeah. story anyway. Yeah. Oh my god, I love Megan origin story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love where she starts being uh, uh, as a cook that just doesn't do well under pressure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then she kind of uh, she kind of gains her confidence through through mm-hmm. Selma's help and. Uh, the other teaching lesson from um, the four, from the graduated yeah. um, top one. I yeah. can't remember his name off the top of my head right now. What? But yeah. Oh, yeah, the pink-haired one. No, it's... No, 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 no. no, no, no. The other one. It was uh, the, the, the big muscular dude. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. The other idiot. Yes, yep. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm surprised the rest of you guys aren't food like mine. <laughs> I feel shame. I mean, no, look, look, it, to be honest, if, if I had to pick a food, right, mm-hmm. it would be that first faux pot roast or whatever. Yeah, I make that always. Yeah, because, like, here's the thing. There's nothing better than potatoes and bacon. Like, I'm, I'm going to be honest, his recipes look great, but it's so simple, so perfect, mm-hmm. so quintessential. Mm-hmm. If, I'm, if I'm going after my favorite, like, food uh, that they did... I love the I love their attempts to take down the Karage Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be fair, that is one of my favorite like little sections early on. Is yeah. the Karage, like the two episode Karage side quest. Mm-hmm. Because I think I think it's just so fun to see something like that. Because like it doesn't matter. They're like competing with like a big corporate entity. What they're doing is never going to be like a huge spread out thing. But they're doing it to, like, help revitalize one little shopping area. Mm-hmm. You gotta save the shopping strip. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's yeah. like yeah. an outdoor mall, you know? Yeah. And I, I get it. It's cute. I yeah. love it. It's wholesome. Yeah. Um, I'd say, though, if I had to pick a food waifu from this show, it would probably be any, pretty much anything that Meat Meat makes. <laughs> yeah, Nikumi. <laughs> yeah, Nikumi. Yeah. yeah. I love when she shows up with, like, the, we can use this quality cut of chicken, and it's like, <laughs> We can't afford that. Yeah. 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 No, it was, that, it was a quality cut of beef. <laughs> yeah. For the first, yeah. 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 Um, because they ended up using chicken in the end. Yeah. Was what it was. But although I will say, I think the only reason I didn't go for the karage is because, unfortunately, with the animation, they still made the chicken kind of look like it was raw huh? a little mm. bit mm. like that was one thing i noticed in the chicken animation like yes there was everything else around it but when i would look at the chicken meat it still looked like it was undercooked and raw it didn't look like how you expect cooked chicken to look good yeah. chicken's just not my personal like i like chicken but and karage is really good like i do like yeah. karage when i get it but if i had if i had to choose a way to eat chicken it would not be karage for me like mm. for me it would be like a hearty, you know, like grandma's chicken soup or like chicken hearts, mm-hmm, right? Yeah. Like personally, not that I don't love karage, um, but like out of all the things, like in the first nineteen episodes that I like desperately want to try, it's it's the it's that fake fake pot roast from the first episode, <laughs> second episode, first. I episode. mean, yeah. If you make the sauce, you can like just have some. Well, yeah, it's I make just it. it's it's one of those things that I've personally never tried. Like I've tried several dishes from the show, but that's one that I've never personally tried. Mm-hmm. Because it just seems a little bit fiddly, and you know my oven's a little funky, and yeah. so I kind of like I didn't want to. 
It does take a while as well, I will say yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Personally. Also, um, so I don't know how, uh, which version you guys watched, but I ended up watching the dub. I've seen both. Okay. Both. And I, I gotta say, though, the, uh, the voice that they chose for, um... Erina, the, the the basically mm-hmm. the one the the, mm-hmm. the, the, the blonde haired girl in the seat of ten, yeah. her English dub voice is the perfect bitchy valley girl type <laughs> archetype voice. I love that for her. Yeah. You know. I not I think I, I watched the sub this time, um, but I've seen the dub before. Mm-hmm. I think it's just been a while. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was just another side tangent for that one. Fair. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's right. There's the plastic from. Next present, Janine. <laughs> no, I, I, but I absolutely love this show. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Really, I, it's just so much more fun than it sounds. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because I've, I've watched, like, a lot of Cooking Enemy, and, and this is maybe going to get into, I, I suppose this is sort of tangenting a little bit into recommendations for me, but, like, for example, I've watched Piace, which is a little Italian, it's, it's, a, it's a cooking anime about, like, a, re- a little restaurant in Italy, right? Um, I've watched uh, Isekai Shokudo, Restaurant to Another World. I've watched Isekai Isekai Nobu, right, which is another, uh, it's, a, it's a sort of a, the, the thing opens on one side to the, the fancy world, but they, they just make really good food. Um, and that one also has like recipes added in and yeah. stuff like that, um, and like little cooking tips. And I've watched several other cooking anime. But this, this one I always come back to. Like, it's really fun and engaging to watch. And I think because a lot of cooking anime, cooking can't necessarily be the focus. Like, a lot of other cooking anime, they have to focus on, like, the, the relationships between the characters. Or, like, cooking is just part of the setting rather than the impetus for the story, right? Mm-hmm. Like, cooking is just what happens because they're in a restaurant, right? Like, Isekai, uh, Restaurant to Another World, right? The, what they're cooking and the technique of it is not the focus of that show. Yeah. The focus is really meeting all these characters who come to the restaurant with their problems or doing, you know, whatever they're doing and then interacting with them. So the food is secondary, even though it's like an anime about food, right? The only other show I've seen recently where cooking is kind of the main drive of the story is Dungeon Meishi, yes. right? Which yeah. I have been watching and I've read it and I adore Dungeon Meishi. And I, well, Dungeon Meishi will be kind of added into my rotation of anime that I just think are really fun to watch an episode or two of, right? But Food Wars is still one of those anime. I just think it's fun sometimes to watch an arc of this show, you know? Like, it's fun, and it's interesting, and it's engaging um, in a way that most food-centric anime aren't. Makes sense, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Look, my only recommendation here is the greatest food anime of all time, mm-hmm. Kitchen uh, Nightmares. <laughs> 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 oh, That's my favorite uh, anime. Hang on, hang on. I really <laughs> thought you were going to say uh, today's menu at the Emia household. You kidding me? No, this is way more stress than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a solid, like, oh, I'm going to like make this meal and like, oh, look at that. Oh, it's so nice to eat the food you cook here. No, 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 no. This is like... If I fail this dish, my life is ruined. You know what? You, you know what, Nick Nick? I'm gonna do you one better. I've got an anime better than yours. Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, but why is this actually just Hell's Kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's fucking raw. It's fucking raw. <laughs> what are you? An idiot sandwich. <laughs> oh my god. No, yeah, that that is the vibe. Yes, honestly. <laughs> By the way, have you seen how absolutely wild the Kitchen Nightmares YouTube channel has gotten? No, oh, no. Well, I have not. I haven't looked at it recently. I'll show it to you later. It's hilarious. Everyone should check it out at least once. Yes. All right. But anyways, that's, you know, my opinions on this anime. <laughs> I know that me and Seki have cooked stuff from this anime. I am wondering, what would you two want to at least cook from this anime? Oh, I don't know. All of it seems way above my skill level. Uh, okay, but hypothetically, yeah. if you had help or thought you could cook, like, any of these yeah. dishes, if like, they were I, hypothetically I, within yeah. your grasp of talent. I've got one. I would actually like to make, um, so, uh, then the, the challenge where Soma is versing his dad for the mm-hmm. second, or for the other time in the mm-hmm. anime, like, later in the series, oh. where he's making the breakfast, the, the dish, I think uh. I would actually want to try and make his dish. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm just gonna say the one that sounded like in the moment when I was watching, I'm like, oh, oh fuck, I want to eat this right now. <laughs> <laughs> just that the, the, the rice bowl, like the simple oh, ass rice bowl. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, that's fair. Where he like got everything on discount on bargain. Yeah, yeah that's uh, fair. Oh, so you mean the meat one? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we can do that. Good. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. so, easy. Speaking of cooking food, when are we doing a uh, Soku Gakino uh, D? Well, well, knickknack, now that you say that, let's see. You have a kitchen big enough for us to use. Um, I have a unprecedented amount of free time at the moment. And we have multiple cameras that we can set up if I bring mine. Woo! So technically, we have the ability now. Seki verse born, Soku no D. Soku no D. <laughs> well, the, mm, eh. I'm, I'm just saying, we have the Look, ability now. You two are the ones that cook the most between us. I mean, honestly, this yeah. is going to be more like less of a Sokugeki no D and more like the way of the house D. Yeah. yeah, but we could also just do a little cooking, cooking with the anime club. Yeah. We have that ability now. We should consider it. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's more like, yeah, honestly, it's more like cooking with the... Uh, the the household instead of uh, this. Yeah, I mean, we could teach both of you like uh, some of the stuff that actually happens in See, I've food cooked course, yeah. on camera and put it on the internet before. I feel like I've, 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 I've done my time. Cool. All right. Well, you know what? Uh, uh, those of you who are still around for the end of this episode review, look out. I will force my way into Knickknack's kitchen soon <laughs> to make a cooking episode Woo-hoo! with multiple cameras. We will make this happen. Yippee! You can also put suggestions of uh, what the heck we no, might make. No, no, I will be deciding what we make because I have to buy the ingredients. <laughs> okay, yeah, fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we do have the anime figured out already for next time. Yep. Yes. It is one of Realm's Usagi dro- Usagi Drop. Bunny Drop. Yes, yeah. or also known as Bunny Drop. Mm-hmm. All right, well, we'll see you all next time. Try harder, everyone.